Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So Starfield is a massive game that can no doubt seem daunting for any new players looking to get into it for the first time. And now that we officially have mod support on PC and Xbox, and with the Shattered Space DLC right around the corner, there's no better opportunity than now to dive in. And to help you out when you get started, I've got 10 things you need to do in Starfield after you start the game. And one not to do. You'll have to stick around to the end of the video for that one. Before we get too far into this though, do me a huge favor and head to the comments and let me know which Bethesda game from the past is your all time favorite. Which is the one that consumed all your time and you still go back to it even now. While you're down there, pretend that the like button is Todd Howard's nose and give it a honk because every honk of Todd's nose is a victory for the channel. So you've just started Starfield and you found yourself working the dreaded nine to five as a deep space miner. The benefits are abysmal and the accommodations are like the underside of a taxi cab's floor mat, but dang it, you're in space and that's what's cool. First thing you find yourself doing is touching the strange magic space rock and having an accident on your first day on the job. And that starts you on your journey with a group of galactic explorers known as Constellation. Now for the first few missions, you'll have fellow Constellation member Sarah Morgan as your locked in traveling companion, which means that she can't be dismissed and you'll need to have her tagging along on this first leg of your journey. Not to worry, you can still break away from the mission and go do some exploration if you want, but this is where number one is going to come in. So, number one, get through the early missions. There's no real benefit to wandering off and going out into the galaxy at this point. Most of what you need to learn about the game will be featured in this first quest. Everything from space navigation and combat, ground combat, and even lock picking. It's all there. And getting through the quest gets you some credits and membership to Constellation. Once you're in, you have your own room and a storage box that you can use that has an unlimited capacity. Number two, tweak your gameplay to suit your play style. And if you want, you can actually do this one first. In a somewhat recent update, Bethesda added the ability to customize your game experience. Everything from combat, health, carrying capacity, and even vendor credit limits. If you don't want to worry about taking environmental damage, and you want a more casual playthrough, you can turn off damage and no longer have to worry about the spacesuits protecting you from the harsh elements of planetary exploration. You, you still need the suit, but you don't have to worry about turning into a frozen space burrito. This is an absolute must for anyone playing Starfield, and it's probably one of its best features so far. At least, you know, until we get some kind of planetary vehicle. Come on, Bethesda! Number three, sleep as often as you can. If you were a real space adventurer, you would need to get some sleep from time to time, and so does your character. In fact, getting more than an hour of sleep will give you an XP boost of 10%, and if you've changed the setting for it, you can enable full health from sleep. So whenever you have time, just go get a quick nap. But remember, sitting in a chair doesn't count. You have to actually sleep in a bed. Number four, unlock your skills. In your skill list, I highly recommend that you unlock security, boost pack training, and persuasion as soon as you can. These skills will be needed early in the game even with a little bit of persuasion, you may be able to pass some persuasion checks, and that will mean the difference between a nasty gunfight and a peaceable solution. And boost pack training will allow you to make use of the extra jump you get from your boost pack. Security is a skill you will need that will allow you to pick locks with your digi pick and let you gain access to early doors and crates during those missions. 
It's important to know that the best gear and weapons won't be found in locked chests and boxes, but on higher tier enemies and special chests at the end of dungeons and missions. Number five, start researching as soon as possible. When you get some resources from looting things on missions and planets, you'll want to start crafting, and to do that, you'll need to research those items beforehand. In the basement of the lodge at Constellation HQ is a place where you can store your items and you can find all you need to begin crafting and upgrading. You'll have access to a research station and with this, you can unlock newer craftable and upgradable things like weapons, food, spacesuits, and more. Number six, sell your stolen goods. Now, if you're one of those players that has a bit of the sticky fingers and your inventory gets stacked with, mm, how can I put it, permanently borrowed goods, well, you're in luck. You can fence your items at any trade authority center in the system, and you can easily recognize those by the <laughs> obnoxious yellow motif and they're located in almost all major hubs. Just sell them your goods and then buy them back for the same amount. No extreme markups here. And as easy as that, those borrowed items are now clear and free. The only exception is if you happen to come across any contraband. That's a different story. Most planets will scan your ship upon entry and if you have contraband, you will get a bounty and it's a pain in the butt to get rid of. Contraband can be sold at the Trade Authority at the Den in the Wolf System, and it can bring a nice price, so mm, it's worth taking the risk. Number seven, sell your loot. While Starfield is definitely not a looter shooter, it still has a ton of weapons and items that drop that you can loot from enemies and your inventory is not infinite. Extra spacesuits, clothes, and weapons will weigh you down quickly. And rather than store them in your player chest, you can instead sell them to a vendor for credits. It will be tempting to keep all those purple and yellow labeled weapons and gear, but selling them will get you one step closer to that newer, better ship. Number eight, upgrade your ship. The Frontier is a nice starter ship that is all manner of cozy, but it is limited in its abilities. Even Korra knows that it's kind of a piece of junk. And the last thing you want is to be exploring the galaxy and the universe's most notorious hunk of crap. Ships come in all shapes and sizes, and the larger ships are gonna require that you rank up your piloting skills before you can buy them. Early in the game, I'd look for a ship that has better storage, a better grab drive, and if you're into having your crew, then you can get one that'll accommodate your Constellation friends and your recruits. The last thing you want is to get into a dogfight in space and lose to a bunch of sniveling space pirates because your ship is weak. Also, you don't have to buy a ship. You can borrow one while out exploring a planet and just kind of make it your new home ship. Surprisingly, some pretty amazing ships can be found this way, and there are a lot of videos on YouTube on the best places to get some of those random ship occurrences. Number nine, get all the XP. This game has a lot of skills that need leveling, and to get them unlocked, you'll need to level up to get those skill points. Thankfully, Starfield has lots of ways to earn XP even early on. You've got missions, side quests, activities, bounties, killing monsters, killing pirates, scanning stuff, going to new places, and even giving books to Korra. All of these can earn you experience. Just keep in mind that skills have tasks assigned to them for you to progress to the next tier. Number 10, and you know what? This one's gonna be corny, but I'm just gonna give it to you. Make sure you have fun. Starfield is an adventure game, and it's a story that can be as immersive as you want it. It's your game, and you can play it however you want. 
Yes, you can even ignore this list, that's okay too. And with the addition of mods, it's even easier to create an experience that's custom tailored to suit your playing style. Even if you want to turn the whole game into Star Wars. Starfield is not a perfect game, and I'm not suggesting that it is. There are still things that can be improved, and there's still content to get released. But it is a game that is very entertaining, and at the very least, will meet you halfway. And now, for that one don't that I'll add to the list. If there was one thing that almost soured the experience for me, Early in my playthrough, it was repetitive planet exploration. So, my one don't is this. Don't get sidetracked with needless exploration early on. I decided to stop playing the campaign and go adventuring. And you know what? 80 hours later... I almost put the game down because I realized I was barely into the main storyline and had almost nothing accomplished. While the game has a vast amount of planets to go to, the real meat and potatoes of Starfield is in the missions, the quests, and the base building. Planet exploration, at least in the beginning, should be a secondary thing. Something you do when you want to take a break from questing and look for random bandit outposts and maybe... Go ship hunting. Because the game uses procedurally generated worlds, a lot of the dungeons and abandoned outposts and factories are going to be very similar. In fact, they're going to be downright identical. And it won't take long for the repetition to blur the lines of the game's true intent. And until we get a vehicle of some kind to traverse the planet's surface, the long walk from your ship to any place will be tiring. So that's it guys, I hope that this has been able to help any new players looking to get into Starfield and that it's at the very least pointed you in a smooth direction. There are a lot of great videos on YouTube on more specific things in the game if you need more detailed help. And of course, for those that are interested, I will be making a video on which mods I currently use for my Let's Play, which you can watch right here on the channel if you haven't done so yet. Be sure to like the video, and if you want in on when those new Starfield videos go up, then be sure to subscribe. Have an amazing day, everyone. Keep being awesome. and I will see all you children of the sky in the next video.